chairman and vice chairman are absent and cannot attend. Uh, I should note that the meeting is being recorded by Mimi Rogers from the North Street Neighborhood Association. Correct? The first item on the agenda is a review and approve the minutes of the December 14, 2011 meeting. No approval. Second. Any discussion, comments on these minutes? I just have a question. It's not to the accuracy, but the $800,000 estimated cost for the leachate rehab deconditioning, uh, would, would that figure be accurate if it went to the city as a cold bill? It would be. What, what the, really? Any other questions? All in favor of approving the minutes? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Passes? I'm guessing we are having interest in taking item one of old business out of order. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? So item one out of old business is the farmer's market policy. And Terry Anderson is here. I don't know if it's appropriate to have Terry speak to this. Is there what did hear Terry speak? <laughs> is that um, well, I think the only thing I wanted to note tonight is that um, I think you received the um, revisions that uh, I think the most major one is uh, from Joe Cook. It's, it was basically a change in the language to, to allow for termination at will. Um, so that um, this would be considered a true license as opposed to a lease under Chapter 30B. And that, that avoids the process of surplusing the property and then going out to bid, and, which is, uh, would add a significant step to the process. And then I added the uh, sandwich board sign uh, that you all had mentioned last, last time I met with you. And I think that's it um, for changes. Otherwise, Everything's the same. We did go uh, for informal discussion to the full city council, although um, after you review it and make a decision, it will go back to the finance and property committee for endorsement. So happy to answer any more questions. If you have anything else you want to talk about. Thank you. Oh, I certainly took the time to read the whole thing this afternoon, and I thought it fell in right in line with, uh, with what you had outlined and proposed at the last meeting, and uh, I'm very comfortable with it. Is there uh, uh, plans to um, have someone take over the responsibilities assigned to you? Yes. In the, in, the uh, in the interim, until my position is filled, Lynn Simmons in the mayor's office will be the liaison. Um, are there any other questions of the board or the staff? I would think. I'd just move that we approve the farmer's market policy as presented. Second. Is there any further discussion? Was it a recommendation or a, an approval that you wanted? Um, I think it's an approval from your board because you're actually one of the uh, permit granting authorities. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Any further discussion? All in favor of approving the policy? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Can I ask one question? Yeah. Terry, are there other areas of um, city policy or city operations that would um, benefit from this type of work that you did? Because it felt like, I know that when we go for permitting, when people go for permitting, it feels like you're all over the map. Are there other areas that you see in need of this, of which we are party to? That's a good question. Um, nothing comes to mind at the moment. I mean, I think, I think actually trying to streamline and Against the permitting process under any circumstance is a good idea. Mm -hmm. um, but nothing is popping up in my head. Um, yeah, I think it's a model. There is, there is a policy that I'm not so sure anybody knows about. Um, the policy, is, policy? Well, it's a policy about using city property. And it was done long before I even started working with the city, I think. Um, and I'm not sure if it was. I think it was formally adopted, but it's it, you know it's a similar kind of outreach to all the departments and the boards that are appropriate, and um, you know I can I can email it to you if you're interested in seeing it. But it's a similar kind of process, but it's a little bit more extensive because it's more for permanent use of uh, city property. Is 
yeah. if I could elaborate a little bit just for your edification, uh, the um, um, the building department has uh, um, worked very hard on streamlining all of the applications uh, and trying to get them all into one packet, along with the planning board, to for builders and things like that, so that uh, uh, they can do it all, you know, at one one stop, or at least uh, pick up the applications in one area. They still still have to get approval from the different boards, but. I, I think they were they were pushing when I was there at least to have one person when someone applied to have one person shepherd that whole thing through. Whoever starts it shepherds it through. And I don't know if In they the ever got department? to that. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, and well, yeah, I know that Carolyn and, and yeah. Louie meet once a week and yeah. do all of the land use permits and yeah. sort of review them together and figure out whatever additional permits are required. I don't think that, um, this that there's a packet, yeah. you know. No, no, just that the, the, this, this operation of this activity is really sort of, it's not building activity, it's sort of just a, a use. Mm -hmm. And where does it end up? But, but I appreciated the process you went through with this, so thank you. Okay. Thank you for your support. Thank you. Thanks, Terry. Thanks, Terry. Thank you. This could be the last time you come before the board. <laughs> She's smiling. Yeah. <laughs> she's not smiling. She's laughing. <laughs> I'm sorry, I missed something else. Never mind. Okay. <laughs> Just some side comments. Okay. <laughs> We're saying you're smiling. Oh, for the first time in ten years. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. <laughs> she's not laughing with you either. <laughs> are there any issues on our agenda that are pertinent to the people left in the audience that we should deal with? I believe it's item number one under new business. Okay. Well, then why don't we go to item number one under new business, uh, which is a discussion regarding the mass DOT site and the request that we received from the reuse committee to um, take an active role in um, acquiring the site and converting the juice to um, recycling, as I understand it. Yeah, I think, you want me to speak to yes, the announcement of Van Ars from the committee? Um, uh, we have been, it's the solid waste, uh, what's the name of our committee nowadays? Whatever, the reuse committee, reuse committee yeah. uh, that was the education committee prior. Uh, we've been working on the uh, creating the ad hoc uh, reuse activities that have been very successful and have been anxious to find a more permanent uh, venue for them, and the discussion always circles around the Mass DOT site. We were curious about what was, uh, what were the obstacles moving forward on the possibility of using that site as a reuse center, and um, felt that if, that we as a, as a subcommittee wanted to advocate for this board, the Board of Public Works, to take an active role in shepherding this forward so that we could get clarity on the ability of us to use that site and to seek your assistance in uh, helping it be made a priority in the mayor's office for the acquisition of the site, if that's what we decide to do. Okay. So to that regard, they, uh, we drafted a letter. It came in your packet. And we're looking for your um, attention and hopefully uh, participation in um, having a conversation with the mayor's office about moving forward on acquiring the site so its next stage of life can be determined which we hope will be with us. Sure, sure. Staff, have anything to add to this? Well, we're trying to set up a meeting with the mayor as we speak about this site next door and moving forward. The previous mayor was on board with uh, uh, taking possession of the property, even though it has some liabilities next door with it that would have to be paid for out of some fund, capping the landfill, demoing the building, things of that nature. So uh, we're waiting to hear back from the current mayor, uh, Mayor Narkowitz, to have that meeting, um, and we'll take things from there. Mass Highway, or Mass DOT, wants to move forward with it as soon as possible. Well, I, would, oh. I was just going to share that uh, we were anxious to get things moving along as quickly as possible, mm -hmm. you know, facing the closing of the landfill at the end of this calendar year, and wanting to have the reuse center on this location, if at all possible, up and running um, 
uh, ideally sometime by the end of the summer so that it's there mm -hmm. uh, and can be in the works. I mean, we know that we're facing the, the revenue stream loss when the landfill closes and want to take this opportunity to maximize our ability to get a foothold in and get the reuse center as part of our operations for the future. And where would you store the materials for the reuse center? If the existing building is uninhabitable. The exit that the brick building's uninhabitable, but the salt shed in the back. The salt shed's full of salt still. Yeah. Well, third depot. Right. And we are we are committed to build a new salt shed mm -hmm. for the That is correct. Right. I just don't know if it will be built by then and they'll move all the materials out. I don't know. That's an unknown to I'm me. just trying to share with you that our sense is that it feels like we have a window of opportunity here where things are changing and mm -hmm. we can get things to change so that there's a reuse center as part of whatever our future operation is. That that. Now's the time. Yeah, yeah my only concern is uh, uh, the talk about hazardous waste on that site and uh, what it would cost us to clean up. And I, yeah, I don't even know what hazardous waste is there. but. Uh, Certainly, uh, you know, they used to store all their transformers out there and everything on the ground. So, you know, do we have a, a, an idea of what's there? Um, we don't believe there's anything there except what's been okay. noted through DEP files, which is a, you want to call it a landfill. It's more of a disposal area that had street sweepings, brick mortar, things of that nature. They wanted to cap. And uh, we have, there's groundwater wells down there that aren't picking up anything. Okay. So uh, the site has been looked at, and we don't believe that there is any hazardous waste down there. Okay. Uh, to put the site in place, what the, uh, to be able to use it, what's the cost of capping and so on? Um, the way their appraiser looked at it, I believe it was a little under $400,000 was the fair exchange of work to be done including the purchase of the salt shed. I believe the cap was about $150,000 or $175,000 for the landfill. I think they pegged the demolition of the building at sixty-five dollars to $75,000. And um, then the salt shed is probably about $150,000 okay. to purchase and build. And we have money set aside for the salt shed already. There was $75,000 set aside through the salt shed enterprise fund and $75,000 set aside through capital improvements, I believe, two years ago. Mm -hmm. okay. Question for Ned. In the normal course of events and weather, would all of most of that salt be used this season? Or? They had that as an emergency backup supply. It's not a regularly used depot, but they, I think it was four years ago we had the salt shortage, and that's when they started using that as a more uh, emergency supply that's a backup operation. So right now, my understanding, it's full of salt. Could it? Could they utilize it currently so as to not leave it so full? Well, if we built a new salt shed, I mean, I, I can have the conversation with District 2. I don't know what their long-term intentions were down there for moving that salt or using it, putting in the new facility. That I don't know. I was just thinking of the cost of moving salt. They typically, you know, they'd have to move all their equipment here and operations here to get at it. And I think that's why they don't do it because all their current salt depots are in their state yards, not the one that's been, I shouldn't say abandoned, but basically put into a pasture. So that's just a backup reserve supply that they don't use every year. It's just there. Okay. That's correct. That's my understanding. Timeline. If we went at it right now uh, with the approval of the mayor and so on, what's the timeline for us to get in there? I would think that if everything goes accordingly and the mayor approves it, and I'm not sure, uh, we work in the city solicitor whether the city council needs to approve the acquisition of land or is it strictly an acquisition by the enterprise fund, um, it probably could be done in a few months. And is it possible to meet the deadlines that MJ is talking about by the end of the year and have us in there? It's possible. It depends a little bit on the scope. If it's just a recycling-related activity or a reuse center, pretty limited permit 
necessary for that. If there was going to be any management of solid waste activity on the site, there's no way we'd be able to do it within a year because of all the permits that would be necessary in order to permit that. So if it's a limited operation, mainly focused on reuse, there's no, no problem really getting that up and running. Could permits be extended from the current site that is permitted over the fence? The fence keeps uh, permits. Bigger. Yeah, but <laughs> there's a need bigger holes in the fence to get those permits. <laughs> there's a designated one acre area off there that's designated for the transfer facility. It's fairly well defined where our operations can be. I think that we were hoping for the, the board to contemplate and perhaps um, vote in favor of moving forward with this discussion and encouraging the city. It sounds like you've already set up the meeting stand. And I'm I, trying to, yeah. yeah. The vote could authorize the real chairman to actively participate in the process. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then I'd like to move that we ask the leadership of the Board of Public Works to encourage and participate in this effort to have that conversation with uh, Mary Narkowitz. Second. Any more discussion? All, right. All in favor? All right. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion passes. Teach Terry to take a meeting now. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> Thank you. Did you want to add anything? Thank you. Um, then we'll go on to item two under new business, which is um, a contract to Brown and Caldwell for transfer station <coughs> permitting in the amount of $25,900. So this was uh, this was a contract we had in the last board agenda, and it was related to um, permitting that would be necessary for, uh, for the Glendale Road transfer station to keep it open after the landfill closes. Um, I wanted to uh, just table that contract until the next board meeting. Um, for a couple of reasons. One, um, I think the board is, is still um, having discussions about the solid waste task force recommendations. And then another part of it is that the scope of the permitting may um, it may possibly change. I'm in um, discussions with DEP about the permitting route for that. And um, pending a change that might impact um, either the price of the proposal or the ability of staff to find the time internally to do the permitting work for the city. Uh, to save some money. So there's a couple of things that are in flux there. So I'd just like to, to push that off into a future board meeting. Make a motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion tabled. Next item is change order number one to contract number 361-11 to Robert E. Melstrom, PE, for Bradford Street Pump Station Residence Services in the amount of $10,000. Second. We, the city has a contract with uh, Bob Melstrom, who's doing resident uh, inspection services at the Bradford Street Pump Station for us. And um, the value of uh, Bob's contract um, is $51,150. And he's near the end of uh, the limit of his contract with us. He's been billing um, time and expense for his efforts on inspecting the pump station. Um, he's been doing a bang up job for us. He's been really uh, been a, a huge asset for us through the um, the course of that work, um, the work is just about um, is just about done, uh, which is good news. The pump station's online. We've had uh, some operator training ongoing this week. Um, there's some uh, work that needs to be done in the spring in terms of site restoration, some paving, some odds and ends that'll happen in the spring. So we wanted to add uh, some money to Bob's contract to allow him to come back out in the spring and, and take care of additional inspection services that we need. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Next item is uh, change order number four to contract 267-11 to WN Schultz Construction for the Bradford Street pump station replacement in the amount of $4,116.66. Approval. Schultz is the contractor on the Bradford Street pump station, and we have a couple of items here um, that are um, that we need that are being addressed through this change order. Um, there are three <coughs> uh, 
um, three items included in this change order. The first one is a credit uh, in the value of uh, $3,895, um, which was the result of uh, a change in a, it was a credit for bearing wall modification. Um, the contractor had requested that the bearing wall supporting the western side of the generator building uh, be modified, and they modified it in a certain way that was proposed and reviewed by the structural engineer. It was acceptable to them. It resulted in less concrete being poured and a, a little bit less work for the contractor. Um, so the, uh, the change in that work, which was approved by our engineer, was uh, $3,895. Um, the second uh, item was related to the addition of an uh, air release vacuum valve and manhole on the 10 inch diameter force main that comes from the pump station. Um, the pump station, because of site conditions, um, there was a new force main that was installed that had a high point that, that um, required the installation of an air release vacuum assembly uh, and a manhole to protect the force main from pressure surges and vacuum conditions. Um, because of that, the, um, the uh, air vacuum release assembly wasn't included in the original design um, and it was needed because of site conditions that were encountered um, at the site that were a little bit different than what was shown in the original construction plans. Um, what was the price of that? Uh, it was $5,511 increase for the uh, air release valve and manhole assembly installation. And the last item was related to the installation of a new uh, gas meter. Um, because of the size of the generator, uh, the new generator at the, transfer, at the, um, at the pump station, um, we needed to install a larger gas meter. Um, and Columbia Gas was out there. Uh, providing that, and we were responsible for paying the price for the new gas meter, um, which had a value of $2,500. The size, the cell horsepower of the pumps in there. You know, Jim, I don't know off the top of my head. <clears throat> Just curious, I'll yeah. find out tomorrow. I don't recall. If you stop in my office, it'd be happy to. Right. Thanks. You're comfortable with this change order? Yeah. Jim? Yeah. 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 Any more discussion? I just got a quick question. Is this this is all um, to the same project that's been ongoing? And what, is there an end in sight on this? For I know you guys continue to spend more money, more change orders, and more money, and more money. And I'm interested if there's if, if we have an end in sight on, on this particular pump. Yes, on this pump station, the Bradford Street Pump Station project. Oh, the pump station's online. And uh, as I just mentioned, uh, there's some site cleanup work and restoration work that will be done in the spring, and will be done in the spring. So, Permanent fencing. New, yeah. the, new the new contract completion date is May 18th, it's of, May 18th. 2012, of 2012. It's been a great project. We've had very few change orders on this. The contractor's done an outstanding job. Most of the change orders I've had have either been credits or no-cost changes for, for minor things on the job. So. We've been real happy with the contract in this one, so I don't, I don't really have any complaints with the, with the work that's been doing. Okay. okay, thank you. Any other comments? All in favor of the change order? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstained? Motion passes. Item number <coughs> five is change order number one to contract 47-12 for the wastewater treatment plant bar rack replacement project to Delray Contracting in the amount of zero dollars. Move approval. Second. This is a uh, this is a change order which basically extends the time of the contract for Delray Construction to complete the installation of the bar rack at the wastewater treatment plant. They had submitted a request um, to us um, a few days ago requesting an extension of time of 30 calendar days. Um, they stated that they experienced a delay in uh, the submittal portion of the project in trying to get the electrical components to fit within the existing space. This required some redesign and revision on their part. Um, we're kind of retrofitting uh, a bar rack uh, you know, within the existing plant. Um, certainly some issues there that they needed to work out to make sure that everything worked. Um, we don't have a problem with the 30 days. They started the work this week. And uh, actually, they're, they're moving along. We'll be done by the end of the week with some operator training, and we'll be up and running. So, um, doing a good job, but we need to extend the contract 30 days to allow for that um, shop drawing process to happen. 
Do we have any increase in costs no. related to this? No. Any other questions regarding this change order? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion passes. Item 6, uh, sole source contract for ESRI software maintenance to ESRI in the amount of $5,300. This is an annual contract we have with RQ. It's for four different modules we run with our GIS. Um, it's been to you before, for, before the board for a number of years now. This is one of these annual maintenance contracts for software updates and tech support. Any questions from the board? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion passes. Item 7 is to wait for BJ to return, I bet. <laughs> so we can set the date for the claims committee for East <coughs> Herald Street. And we have one member of the committee here. Right, so I'm not sure if we can set the yes. meeting. One, one in time. Then what? What's the problem at the 26th hour? It was a uh, backup in a sewer service line that was on city property. This is the third backup they've had on the property. Once in 2001, once in 2008, and one just recently. In their own line? In the service line, but in, in the city layout. Is it appropriate to set the date tonight with members of the committee absent? We <laughs> well, that's the big question. I know Terry will be here at the next board meeting, so I assume well, he's just Okay. <laughs> sure you want to take more time to think about it? <laughs> January 25th? Yeah. It should take about 15 minutes for the claim. 20 minutes. 510? Sure. 510, January 25th, 2012. We don't actually need a motion for that, do we? No. Uh, next item under old business uh, is Solid Waste <coughs> Task Force recommendations. Is that Bruce? I guess it is. Um, I raised the question about you know what our planning um, looked like for the December anticipated fiscal landfill, right. and uh, David and I have talked about it a little, and the committee's clearly talked. The reuse committee is talking about it. And I just thought it would be helpful to have the general conversation. Jim actually. The memo you put together was very helpful in terms of laying out timelines. Right. And, you know, people keep on asking what's going on and what are, what's our game plan. So, like I said, it was nice to see the details of, of Jim's memo. I, I hadn't seen the option stuff before. The costing and the, the more detail about the you know, pricing that we've done. I thought it would be a, a good um, a good primer for the board. Um, we only had we had two members of the board. So we're on the solid waste task force, and the rest of the board members obviously are not involved uh, uh, at all the meetings. So what I what I did is just put together this brief memo and, and sent it out to the board, sort of summarizing um, the recommendation of the task force in terms of keeping both transfer stations open, um, and, and provided a summary of some of the permits that would be needed and um, planning costs associated with with some of those activities, and put together a little bar chart showing that it takes several months to get permits for the transfer station and um, there's some cost items there associated with starting up and uh, I had attached uh, just a summary um, of the option of keeping both transfer stations open that was used as the focus of the discussion with the task force last year when the task force was meeting. So it provides, I think it's um, provides the background in terms of where um, staff felt the task force, what the recommendations were and the information that we had developed for use in their deliberations about it. So um, probably a good opportunity for the, the board to review that and, and, and get a sense of where the task force left off with their understanding of what, of what the option was. And um, basically from the staff standpoint, it was keeping both transfer stations open, 
We had a reduced number of hours. We had sort of an outline of what materials would be handled at each facility. And uh, we had developed some uh, preliminary pricing structures that were used in the task force deliberations for that option. So just sent that around for the board um, to think about as, uh, um, as we discuss how to move ahead. And I think that, you know, what sort of raised the question for me was, um, you know, we had the contract amendment that came up to invest in some permitting activity. And I, it was a surprise to me that we needed to do some additional permitting to retain a transfer station off of the Glendale Road site. And I just wanted to make sure that we were being um, wise and prudent with investing public money in a site that, you know, in my mind, were in shutdown phase on. And I, I guess that's why I put it out there. And I, I guess I also don't want us to, you know, I'm, I'm sad that Terry and Roe aren't here tonight because mm -hmm. I think that they have the best experience having had the, the broader conversations with the committee from last right. year. But it does seem to me that, that we have the recommendations, <coughs> but this board hasn't taken a position regarding those recommendations or added to them regarding how we intend to implement those yeah. recommendations. Yeah. And that's that really your point. point. Somehow, um, I, I, it sounds like we need to put some structure to that mm -hmm. so that we collectively can agree on um, how to move forward. That's your point. Jim? Uh, as part of that, uh, uh, we're, are we the ones that will put together a contract uh, to solicit bids for trash pickup from a private hauler? That's part of the, at least I think that's part of it, isn't it? Not trash pickup. The RFP that the RFP that we would need to do would be for disposal capacity to, at a disposal facility. To when the landfill closes, we're going to need a place to bring the solid waste that's collected at the transfer stations. The residents would contract themselves with private haulers that don't want to use the transfer stations. Okay, and, and the city is not going to get involved in doing a citywide trash pickup. I thought that was part of it. No. No? Well, it was one, it was one of the options. It was rejected. It was rejected. Oh, all right. right. I think it's been explained to us that it was narrowly rejected, and it, it, it seems to me that Terry's understanding was that narrowly rejected for the time being while we, while we go through a transition phase of closing the landfill, but not in his mind, not permanently rejected. I believe it was two years they asked for that we keep the transfer stations open while we mold over other ideas of solid waste management. But, but that's well, I don't see the transfer stations closing ever. Well, and that sort of is the reason why we need to get to this final decision document that that is uh, that sets forth what we think the policy is mm -hmm. or the program. Uh, I agree. But we will need to do, we will need to figure out where we're going to hold our trash to, even if we're collecting it at our own transfer stations. Yeah. And that does also require an additional investment in equipment and containers and roll-offs yeah. to be able to handle that. So. Mm. I understand that part. Amy, you had your hand? Well, I actually was on the solid waste task force, so I just thought I'd give a little bit of feedback. Um, one of the things that, I, I don't know if Jim can clarify, but I think one of the reasons why the transfer station on Glendale Road was the one we kind of wanted to keep open was because it could, we, people could take certain items that they couldn't take to Locust Street, so like mattresses and those types of things. Now, if, if you get the DOT site and then can offer that, that might be an option, but I, I don't know where that would go. And at the time, we weren't considering that DOT site, so we, had, we were just thinking about what was more convenient for people. Um, you can contract with people, and there was an idea that you could contract with the city, come pick it up, or different things, but it just seemed like the more e reasonable thing to drop it off for that. Um, and as for the curbside, citywide curbside, the real sticking point with that was to really make it successful, you had to have a, almost about an 80% of opt-in of households. And so you couldn't offer both the transfer station and the curbside because they would work against each other. So that was... There was a concern amongst the task force that basically you weren't going to get enough people to want to join in at that point. You had to spend more time, you know, 
people might change their minds, but it was just you just had to give them more time to get used to the change of not having the landfill and fees were going to raise and maybe the fees would then become almost similar to what the curbside would be and then people would be more willing to go to citywide curbside. But So those were a lot of the discussions that we had um, for the final. Actually, if there was one sticking point, I'd say that it was about whether or not to keep both open or just to have one open. That was the thing that... Yeah, I think, you know, Mimi's absolutely right that the, the critical part of the Glendale Road drop-off is that we do a lot of waste diversion activity down there that takes up room. We, we don't have any other place to do it. So the proposal was to keep both transfer stations open for um, limited. We reduced the number of operating days to keep the cost down, but we certainly needed Glendale to handle some of those waste materials that we'd like, we'd, we'd re we have no other place to recycle them, basically, and collect them. So that was part of, uh, you know, part of the thinking there. Sounds like. I just have a question, just a point of clarification. Um, why is it necessary for is it necessary for the city to um, take on the responsibility for finding a new place to take the trash and to do that on the city side, or or can that be done just paying a, a private contractor to? I'm just curious. Well, the the, uh, the solid waste task force. One of the first things that they talked about was what's the city's responsibility in terms of managing waste programs within the city, and because you the city has the option to not do anything, of course. But I think the the task force was was quick to decide that the city should play some role in making sure that waste and recycling activities are well managed, so you know problems with illegal dumping, so that you have good recycling programs and other diversion programs. Isn't there some sort of chain of custody? Like, I mean, I know, maybe I'm getting a little bit off topic, but uh, the trash at the transfer station, people can bring it there. Let's say you contract with DUSO or Solid Waste Solutions or whoever. Um, if they do something wrong or illegal or bad with the trash, that's not your problem, isn't it? I mean, it's... it's well, it's... But, it's, they, but they, they have to meet their... I just don't understand... I mean, I'm just, I'm just curious why you can't just contract with a private hauler to get rid of the trash instead of doing uh, investment on the city side and have the city take on that responsibility to get rid of the trash at the transfer station. I'm not sure I understand the question. Well, people drop off their trash at the transfer station. It goes somewhere. Either the city takes it somewhere with city-owned trucks or else a private hauler picks up the trash and gets rid of it. A contractor to take a it contractor. from the transfer station, like right. We, right. we had to do so under contract, I think, four years ago to do that for us. Right. Whoever does it, the contract that the city has would have stipulations in there that the waste has to be disposed at a, a permanent facility that's in compliance with all state and federal regulations. So there's sort of that, you mentioned chain of custody sort of language. So there's sort of that lang type of language would, which would be in any contract related to <coughs> waste disposal so that, you know, we're making sure that we're dealing with a a reputable company, and that the site's uh, the site where the waste is being delivered to is is operating with a you know an operating license that's in compliance. So the only way you can do that is if the city actually drives the trash to the place. No, I mean we could no. hire someone. You could to, hire someone. Yeah. Right. Okay. And, and we I think currently. That's your question is is that should we invest in the equipment, right, and the service provision of, of taking that container from our transfer station here down to wherever it ends up disposed, right. rather than just contracting with somebody to bring a container, have mm -hmm. it here. We might operate the the people going in and putting trash into that container, but why do we need to own the container itself and the it's operation of driving? It's a cost. Yeah. It could be done either way. I mean, we just found out today that um, apparently uh, <coughs> hauling of waste now is uh, from any transfer station is wage rates. At thirty-eight something dollars an hour for the drivers. I didn't quite understand. <clears throat> we just saw a ruling today um, from the labor uh, the labor board that waste being hauled from transfer stations under municipal contracts, we have to pay wage rates to the truck drivers for private contractors. For private contractors. Not That's, That's right. That's not a new ruling. Well, Jan Amin was fighting it through um, a Franklin Solid Waste District up in uh, Greenfield, and uh, they came back and said, no, you have to pay wage rates. Because when I was town administrator down in Millville, we had to pay the wage rates. We had to ascertain that the wage rates were paid, even though we hired a private hauler to do that way, that service for our town. That was in 1992. <laughs>
So it sounds like <laughs> we need a champion here to sort of advance all these topics and bring put them in a format that can come back to the board for discussion and decision. Um, working certainly with staff, but um, it seems like that's the direction we need to head. Um, I don't know if that means we ask staff to do it solely, if we put together a committee, a subcommittee of this group to work with staff. I don't know if anyone has any thoughts on how that might best go forward. My thought is that the launch point has to be the task force recommendations. We had made a lot of, staff had made a lot of assumptions in terms of how the facilities would operate, in terms of the hours and equipment needs, who would do the hauling, all the, the cost structures, and it turned out to be a system that um, would, be, would be cost effective. And we had made a lot of assumptions and we had made sense for the, the board to become familiar with what those assumptions were in terms of level of service and how the services would be provided. And then, um, either agree or we can modify those in terms of how we move forward. I think the you know the, the critical item in my mind is really the Glendale Road transfer station because it's going to take eight months um, at this point to get the permits that are necessary so we don't you know we don't have a tremendous amount of time to get that in place by the end of the year. And the other question I had in, uh, is where we're talking about doing this DPW new facility with the existing <coughs> transfer station operations here, has there been thought about just shutting down this transfer station for a period of time while that construction is happening and just using the Glendale Road facility entirely or other ideas to get that traffic out of the way of the construction project? It won't be in the way. Construction is all happening on that. So there won't be any conflicts at the transfer, at the okay, transfer so station. So we're not anticipating here. any conflicts with no. the So, staff feel comfortable advancing this topic and bringing it to the board, or would you like to use a subcommittee to help do that? Well, a subcommittee might be useful just in terms of there's a lot of information so for the board to sit through. Um, it might make sense to have, um, have a lot of the details discussed with a subcommittee. I don't think the subcommittee would need to, to be in place too long, but it might be good just to go through all the details and uh, be able to vet a lot of the work that's been done to date on, on what we think the, pro the future of the program direction it's headed based on the task force uh, work. So do I get to appoint a subcommittee? Uh, I was actually going to suggest that I, yeah, I was, I'm reluctant for us to make any major decisions on solid waste stuff without Rowan and Terry here. I, I am but too, I except I was going to put those two on the subcommittee. <laughs> <laughs> Way to go. <laughs> well, because of their participation in these topics um, up to this point. And uh, I, it, it seems like we really don't have a lot of time. We can no. certainly wait two weeks, but... No, I, I agree with you that it feels like we really need to roll up our sleeves and start the, the planning for... Right, I think so. I, I don't know if there, there, there can be three on the committee, and I don't know. Do you have an interest in being on it? I do have I an mean, interest in working on it. I've, you know, I've been involved with the reuse committee, too. I'm interested well, to does this make sense, there. or would the board rather wait till the next meeting? I'm, I'm open to the break, and Jim has something in the I think Terry's out of town for a couple of weeks, so we may not be able to... It doesn't to, really matter. It does not matter. <laughs> we, we may want to just have it on the agenda for the next meeting um, when he's back, and then we can talk about it again. And then in the meantime, I'll, I'll work on... Uh, trying to fill in the details on the transfer station permitting and answer a couple of questions that I have with DEP in that regard. And do we have a cost structure? I, I know that you know you gave us a summary of what, we do. The, what we're projecting to be charging people. And we do. And I'll, what I can do is email that. Uh, I can email it out to the whole board in terms of what the costs are and the assumptions and everything. Mm -hmm. And then you know, you'll know you have um, more of an understanding. I didn't want to put too much in that little memo that I sent out the other day, but um, I'll be happy to send the spreadsheets around. That was very good, by the way. Yeah. And do we have any information, uh, like a six-month sort of window on how things have been working with the bags in terms of the revenue versus the tonnage that's coming? Uh, not prepared right now to, to speak to that, but we can. Okay. Uh, how, how was, I was wondering how rapidly the landfill is filling as compared to not filling, do we have three months left here? Uh, 
the well, last the last capacity calculation that we did had uh, the length of life extending into December of this year. Um, we're out doing another uh, topographic survey this week. I think we were out there this week getting more data to up, to update those uh, projections, but um, it's near the end of the year. It could be December. Um, depends a lot on the amount of waste we get. The Christmas rush. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, it also could be influenced by actions that we took. If we want to extend it for a couple of months or three or four months or something, if we could divert some trash so that it wasn't, didn't reach its capacity limit as, as quickly as it would otherwise. The problem does is we still have fixed operational costs that we need to cover. Well, that's, that's part of the equation, mm -hmm. yeah, the important part. Well, we're hoping with some of the reuse activities that we get some of the stuff that ends up in there. Like, it'd be lovely to find another place besides styrofoam. Not that it's heavy, but it's bulky. So, any other discussion on the solid waste task force recommendation? It sounds like we have a plan of sorts, at least to get us to the next meeting. Then we can go on. Under informational item one, it's solid waste update. I suspect a lot of that we just talked about. I don't know if there's more information. Those are all the items on the agenda. Do any of the board members have anything they'd like to bring up tonight? Gary? Jim? Staff? Ned? No. Jim? BJ? MJ? Um, <laughs> first is, um, I got in, in my email last week uh, a, a contact sheet from a resident in Northampton that came directly to me without being siphoned through BJ. I just wanted you to all to be aware that you have the opportunity to get direct mail. Oh, so. yeah. Do you the website, all your email addresses are on that? Did you know? Oh. I didn't realize it on the board website. Oh. And the other question I have was about the private ways. We had a discussion about private ways mm -hmm. uh, and where we were on those. And just well, curious. we're kind of at a standstill now because we're in the midst of changing city solicitors. Uh, so um, we're hoping to start working on it sometime later this month. I just thought the inspector's observation and suggestion <coughs> about low hanging fruit was a mm -hmm. great idea. I do too. David? No. Um, I have yeah. no motion we adjourn. Is there a second? Ask a question. Oh, sure. Sorry. The frequency of the conference committee meetings, is it is that a burden if they were to happen every month rather than every quarter for this board? They were scheduled on a monthly basis and then we cancel them if we don't have business. Right, and the charter uh, calls for qu quarterly. Yeah, I think RS and yeah. yeah. Well, I can speak for myself, and it's it's not a burden. There was a point in time when landfill issues were quite active that we were meeting monthly. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's not a know. burden for me. And so when they do get canceled, how, how, how are they canceled? I think the chair makes a decision. We just have a call for agenda items, and if nothing surfaces, then the chairman calls or cancels it. Oh, usually well, the Friday working with BJ, the, the chair cancels. Right. I usually send out an email to everyone asking for agenda items, and then I talk to Jesse, and he okay. makes the decision. He asks if I received any items, and if we don't, he tells them to cancel. Okay. I mean, with so many things that appear to be going on, it just seems like some of the stuff gets lost. I, I think that had we had these meetings, I think, every month, I don't think, and, and I'm, I'm going to put my neck out, I don't think that um, the DPW might have been involved so much in uh, the Bradford Street pump station. I think Coca-Cola might have had to, uh, we didn't know anything about it. That's why it just, because it was part of their TIF agreement. So that's one thing that started, it just infuriates me as it goes on. Um, and I was going to address it when Terry was here, but it was part of their TIF agreement to upgrade the Bradford Street pumping station. That was the TIF agreement passed by the city council. And how it got to this point, I think, was there just was not enough conversation, not enough communication. Um, and I don't know exactly how it happened, but we know that now we're into it for nearly a million dollars out of DPW, out of uh, enterprise fund money. So and I know even uh, 
Jim Dostal had mentioned it one time, how this kept going and going and going, and I just don't think there was enough communication on it. And a lot of things are happening right now. There's the, uh, the bridge, there's the DP, there's even, uh, I know it's not part of the DPW, but it's the bridge. Now they poured concrete today, which I don't think anybody even uh, realized for the footings for the bridge on River Road. But I watch it pretty closely, I and mean, there's a lot of things that are happening in the city. I think that the conference committee should probably try to meet um, every month, or at least the way it's canceled maybe should be changed. Maybe the, the chairman should talk to the regular members of the committee also. So, because every time it gets canceled, I've never even heard about it. I guess get a cancellation notice in the mail. And I think I'd like to know about it before it got canceled. We've had a few, we've had a few meetings. It seems like we've been meeting almost monthly anyway, right? Except, except of late. Yeah. We did yeah, one think, in January because of the appointments. Right, right. I of remember the committees, that. But I, I mean, I send you an email every month asking for agenda items. Do you not get them? I don't get emails from you on agenda items for the conference committee. Well, that's part well, of the problem. I'll check the email address I have. Okay. Um, well, anyway, uh, but it is coming up that the charter is being reviewed, the charter is being rewritten. Um, I just didn't know if it was a burden if I had asked to put it on uh, for every month rather than every quarter. Not for the two board members that are on it currently, but we reorganize all yes. shortly. So. Okay. All right, thank you. Okay, so we have a motion and a second to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed?